So I'm Roger Angel. I'm a professor of astronomy and optical sciences at the University of Arizona. And uh, I've spent most of my life uh, working on making better optical telescopes. And uh, now I'm trying to make better solar concentrators using all that uh, knowledge from astronomy. There are various ways to make solar photovoltaic electricity. And a huge amount of the effort has gone into making cells that are more expen less expensive and more efficient. We've now got to the point that there are some cells, concentrated PV cells, that are extremely efficient, 40% conversion efficiency. And also, if you concentrate the light on them, and we're using a factor of 1,000 concentration, the cells are very small. And as a result, they're inexpensive, at least in terms of uh, per unit power. So PV panels installed are now $5 a watt. The goal to compete with fossil fuel is $1 a watt. And concentrated cells are 20 cents a watt. So in some sense, the need to bring down the price to make PV competitive in the area of concentrated cells, we're there, but uh, the cells are cheap but they only get that cheap when you really focus the light on them. So what's missing now in making uh, you know, electricity to save the planet, to reduce the carbon footprint, actually is an optical problem. It's a problem of how do you focus light onto these cells with a cheap optical system. And so building on my background of 20 and 30 years in making astronomical optical systems, it seemed like a natural step to try and solve this, this new problem for solar energy. Uh, the astronomical telescopes that we have been making and other people around the world typically cost $100 million for maybe 100 square meters of telescope. So a million dollars per square meter if you average out everything. If you're going to be fossil fuel, you have to be $100 a square meter. So it's the same thing, but different. And the difference is it costs 10,000 times less per square meter. So what's the same is the mechanics and the physics and the material science and the thermal and all the rest of it. All the underlying principles are the same, but you have to figure out how to sacrifice quality. You know, we don't want Hubble quality. We want something you know, more like headlight quality. So the trick is to figure out ways to take out all the cost. And basically using all the principles I've learned in making optics and mechanics for astronomy, I think we've now got to a solution that will make $100 a square meter. If you want 1,000 times concentration, you get that with a 30 power telescope. So if a telescope has 30 power magnification, it produces at the output, you know, telescopes have an exit pupil where you put your eye, and the concentration of the light at the exit pupil is a thousand, if it's a 30 times telescope, it's a thousand times what it was coming into the front lens. So a 30 power telescope is sort of what you want. More than just concentration, what it does, the, the light that comes out of the exit pupil is kind of stays fixed even for different objects. If you move a telescope around, point at a bright star, the light on the exit pupil will be fixed even though the telescope's wobbling. So one of the problems in using a, a big dish to collect uh, solar energy for the cells is how do you uniformly illuminate a number of cells at the focus? Well, telescope optics sort of both collects the light and outputs it in a stable form. So we've been then trying to adapt that principle to make the primary mirror very inexpensively, uh, which we do by shaping big sheets of glass and back silvering them, and then making the sort of exit optics, like the eyepiece of the telescope, becomes the exit optics that's going to paste up a lot of light very uniformly on a bunch of cells. So I've, I've used everything I know about mechanics and optics and instruments and thermal conduction and transport and it's a, it's a wonderful systems issue that, that brings together you know, so many different aspects. We've designed everything so that the cost of the steel 
is going to be less mass of steel and less cost than any other way of doing this. So it's been a system thing, right? How do you work together steel, glass, cells, optics, so that the grand total in materials costs and fabrication costs, installation costs, how do you get all that down into this dollar a watt? And it, it looks pretty doable to me, so it's very exciting. And my big lab, which has all these years made the world's biggest mirrors, now is making the world's biggest solar mirrors, right? And that's kind of fun. I've had a lot of fun for, you know, nearly 50 years doing astronomy. Um, I actually look on it now as a little frivolous <laughs> in the sense that I'm so panicked about the planet. You know, if I've got technical skills, I can use them to next, make the next best, biggest telescope. Or maybe I can use them to try and do something towards fixing global warming. And I feel now that I would be irresponsible, right, if I didn't use what I know to tackle the second problem, the global warming problem. Because the stars we have, you know, it's projected that we won't be able to see very far out into the universe in about another two or three billion years. So we have a little time to work that out. 